In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, a good morning and welcome to our parish communion for Finchampstead and California Parish. My name is Reverend Gemma and I'll be leading this morning. Um, Reverend Julian will be preaching and we'll be having our reading and our intercessions contributed by members of the parish. So we're going to begin this morning with just a little bit of quiet, just to focus our minds on God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. And we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we come now to our prayers of penitence. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second commandment is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Therefore, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And the almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins. Time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we say the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And our special prayer for today. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I'll hand over to Morris for our reading and Reverend Julian for our sermon. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus tells the parable of the sower and then explains its meaning. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables saying, listen, the sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, 
for they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone who hears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, the parable of the sower marks a turning point in Jesus' ministry. He is no longer welcome in the synagogue. And for that reason, he has to teach the people somewhere else. So where does he go? Well, he lives close to the Sea of Galilee. So he heads down to the lake and he teaches the people there. And unlike uh, in a church service, in our modern day services, where the preacher's standing and the the, the people are sitting. Jesus is the one who is sitting, probably at the end of a boat, and nearby on the shoreline, the people are there, the crowd are standing, listening to what our Lord has got to say. And the first parable that our Lord teaches them uh, is the parable of the sower. Now you may ask, why does he begin with that parable? Well, if you are going to teach people about the coming kingdom, then why not start with the parable which tells them about how the message, the word of God, is received. So the parable of the sower is about how the human heart responds to the word of God. The sower is God, the seed is the message, and the four soils are the different ways the word of God is received in the hearts of people. And as we read the explanation of the parable of the sower, which is also known as the parable of the four soils, it becomes apparent that there are four conditions of the human heart that are evident here. Firstly, there is the deceiving heart. Secondly, there is the demonstrative heart. Thirdly, there is the distracted heart. And then lastly, there is the discerning heart. And wherever the word of God is expounded, the sayings of the parable of the sower hold true. You see, the parable of the sower describes what happens in congregations the world over. Where the word of God is proclaimed, the human heart will be challenged. And it'll be challenged in those different ways which our Lord highlights when he gives his explanation of the parable of the sower. So firstly, there is the scattering of the seed on the path, verse 19. And paths are typically hard, bare and unprotected. And so the seed that falls on the path are those who hear the word, but they do not understand its importance. They deceive themselves into thinking that the word of God and the message of salvation is unimportant to them. So why, you may ask, does the human heart act in that way? You know, we've seen it amongst our family and our friends. Well, Jesus firstly seems to imply that the mind is the great battleground. That's where the evil one is at work. And there are those who fall into the mindset that they simply do not need God 
in their lives. God is an irrelevance to them. You know, God barely registers on their radar. And so when they hear the word of God, they simply don't get it. Or as Jesus says uh, in our gospel reading this morning, they simply do not understand. And the great tragedy of this type of person is that one day they will need God. But sadly, they are unable to see this. Their hearts have been deceived. And not unlike those who think God is an irrelevance, where God is simply a, almost like a, a fading blip on their radar, there are those who simply switch their radar off. It may be that the cravings of this life, you know what they are, the money, the sex, the power, all those sorts of things, those things shut their mind off to the truth. They close their ears to God, their hearts, their hearts become hardened to God's word, a bit like the dusty past that Jesus likens them to. And there is, let's be honest, none so blind as those who do not want to see. And that's what happens when people switch off to God. So these are the people who do not understand the message and the evil one comes and snatches away what is immediately sown in their hearts. So this is the seed which is sown along the path. Well secondly there is the seed that falls on the rocky ground. Now rocky ground only has a little amount of soil and this points to the superficial person. This points to the person where nothing's really that serious. It's the, it's the shallow-minded person. You know, they may be very demonstrative in their new found faith. Jesus tells us that they hear the word with joy, verse 20. But they have no root and that joy only lasts a little time. And so once that excitement declines, so does their enthusiasm for God. They, these are the sorts of people whose lives are, little, are littered with things which start with great gusto and excitement, but never finish because there is no root. And a man can be like that with God's word. When he first appears it, he may be swept off his feet by maybe a great sermon uh, maybe worship songs, choral music, all these things which we so enjoy, or even indeed some great parable or saying of Jesus. But no one can live on emotion alone. You know, there is a, a worship song. Some of you may listen to worship songs. This is of contemporary uh, Christian music. And there's a worship song by uh, arguably... Uh, Britain's greatest worship song composer, a man called Matt Redman. And he's been involved in contemporary worship for many years. And this sort of contemporary worship appeals to, to the younger generation. It is a great way of getting uh, younger folk into church and interested in God's word. But there is a danger that it, there can be a lot of emotion. You know, it can sometimes, the music is so nice and appealing to, to, to our ears that... Uh, that actually it becomes like a pop concert. And so this worship leader, Matt Redman, he was aware of this. And so he wrote a song called The Heart of Worship, which reminds us or reminds those who attend these uh, contemporary services that what is more important is your heart for the Lord. And these are the words. When the music fades, the, the song was... Uh, the heart of worship and this is what he wrote, wrote when the music fades all is stripped away and I simply come I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within you're looking into my heart so a demonstrative heart is not enough I'm afraid Christianity has its demands. It's the call to serve, the call to give, the call to go the extra mile, the call not to, to, to not count the cost. And all these things must be based before God's word can be accepted in the human heart.
So the seed that spores on the rocky ground is the man who may have the demonstrative heart. He may receive the word with joy, as it says, as Jesus says in the parable, uh, and with enthusiasm as well. But there's no root to carry forth that passion for God's word in tougher times. Well, thirdly, there is the seed that was sown among the thorns. Now, this is the hero who has so many interests in life that the most important thing gets crowded out. I think I'm probably in a, a, a little bit of danger on this one here. And I think many of us, uh, particularly with our Western lifestyle, are by nature busy people. You know, we live busy lives and there are so many distractions. And so we become preoccupied with the many things around us. And we forget that which is most important. And God no longer takes precedence. He's no longer first in our lives. And what is it? Do you remember the, uh, the story of Mary and Martha? And Martha was busy always doing things. And she complains to Mary, uh, who was actually sitting at the Lord's feet. And actually it's Jesus who, con who uh, commends Mary for sitting uh, at our Lord's feet and learning from him. Our Lord says she has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. And he says, Martha, you're busy with many things, but this is all that you need to learn from me. So it's true that we can become so involved in things, in committees, all sorts of ministries, youth, outreach, going into the schools, something which I miss at the moment. I used to enjoy going into the schools. And all these are good things in themselves. But it leaves no time, if we just solely focus on these busy things, then it leaves no time for the, for the one for whom all love and service flows. The Bible is adamant that if God is to make the best use of our lives, then we must come to him first. Then what does he say? I am the vine and you are the branches. You know, he is the one who feeds us. He feeds the branches. He gives life to the branches. And he's the one who prunes those things in our lives. He cuts off those things in our lives which are unproductive. So we must come to him first. And we must be careful not to substitute what is second best with what is is best you know second best is always the greatest enemy of what is the best well fourthly and lastly there is the fourth seed that falls on the good soil this refers to the person who hears the word and understands it this is the woman or man with a discerning heart this is the person who is sensitive to god's word and treasures it inside. It is like the person who, when they find the treasure hid in the field, they go and sell everything that they own. You know, that is um, uh, an example of how precious the word of God is. This is the heart that takes everything to the Lord in prayer. They seek God's advice first. They are at all times willing to learn. They're never too proud or even too busy to listen and to spend time with the Lord. And I think you would agree that many of us would have been saved from all kinds of heartbreak if we'd simply stopped and listened to the advice of a wise friend. And that wise friend for us is our best friend, Jesus Christ. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And so we must pause and listen to him. And so the seed that falls on the good ground, it develops, it germinates. This is the heart of the discerning person and it bears fruit, yielding a hundredfold, 60 and 30 times what was originally sown. So as I come to an end, my prayer for you this morning is that you be like the seed that was sown in the good soil and that we may be the one who listens, understands and obeys the word of God and so grows in Christ. 
Amen. Well, thank you, Reverend Julian. And now we affirm our faith by saying together, We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. And we believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I hand over to Martin with our intercessions. Good morning and greetings from your Embrook outpost. We pray for our Sovereign Lady the Queen, for this nation and for all the nations in this time of plague, for those in charge of public health and all the other problems that affect us. We pray for Hong Kong as it comes under pressure from China and for the United States as it enters a turbulent election cycle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this locality as it wrestles with some new virus cases over the last few days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world as the reopening process starts. We look forward to the time when we can pray and sing together again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and those who are dying and give thanks for all that has been done for them in hospitals and care homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have recovered and received a new lease of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our clergy, our PCC and all this parish as it goes through the appointment process for a new rector and begins a new phase in its parish life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may enjoy some fine July weather. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray in the company of St Mary, St John, St James and St Eligius for ourselves and all our needs and hopes. Receive these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body or by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's offer one another signs of peace, whether physically or virtually. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This golden stone, this solid ground, found through the faces proud and strong. What types of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, my sorrow cease. My comfort of my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us upon the cross, put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life, and fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for all the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and bring before you this bread and this cup, we thank you for counting as worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share in this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever and ever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are all one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance, that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us offer ourselves in service to God. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now we'll have our final hymn. And just before our blessing and dismissal, I just have a few notices to give. The first is please do look at your emails with the notice sheets and some information on them. If you're not receiving the weekly emails from us, please do get in touch with the office and we'll make sure that you're added to that list. Our weekly Bible discussion group has started up again via Zoom and the details can be found by getting in touch with Reverend Julian. And next week, which is St. James's Day, the patron patronal festival of one of our worship centres. We're going to celebrate that by having a Zoom coffee after church. So I'm afraid you'll have to bring your own, make your own coffee and biscuits, but do please join us for 
a chance just to chat and share together. The details of that Zoom invitation will have been on this week's mailing and will be on next week's mailing. So do please look out for those. If you haven't received them, as I said, please do get in touch with the office or get in touch with me. Um, we're also lucky that Reverend Tonya is willing to host some screenings of the New Wine Festival. So if you're interested in seeing some of that and the teachings that they have on offer, please look at the notice that's attached to this week's mailing about that. And finally, just a reminder that St James's Church is open for private prayer on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays between 10 a.m. and 12 noon. So if you would like to spend just a little time in choir and reflection, please do do that. And if you feel that you might like somebody to pray with you, please just drop the office an email and one of the clergy team would be more than happy to spend some time with you. And so we come to our blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all and all those we love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.